time. Thank you so much for joining us. I am Mackenzie Cadenhead, and along with my friend Sean Ryan, I wrote this book, Marvel Superhero Adventures, Mighty Marvels. And we thought it would be fun to read it to you today and to show you some of the amazing artwork by Derek Lofman, who illustrated it. So sit back, relax, and uh, make yours Marvel. Here we go. Oh, and it also features some of my good friends here. Captain Marvel, Ms. Marvel, Spider-Man, Green Goblin. Anyway, chapter one. Watch out! Peter Parker's eyes widened as he leaped over a dog. Thanks, MJ, he called over his shoulder to the red-haired girl who had issued the warning. He held her by the hand and pulled her along with him. Peter and his friend Mary Jane Watson skirted a sandwich board and raced past a pretzel stand. But despite the obstacles in their way, they didn't slow down. They ran fast. New York's Coney Island was full of people enjoying the beautiful summer day. They strolled down the boardwalk, they rode the Ferris wheel, they lounged on the beach. Only Peter and MJ seemed to be in a hurry to get anywhere. Did Peter know something no one else did? Thanks to his secret identity, spoiler, Peter Parker is Spider-Man, Peter often found himself rushing off to fight crime. Was the Sandman stealing all the sand on the beach? Had Dr. Octopus taken over the aquarium? There it is, Peter hollered. He dropped MJ's hand and sprinted the rest of the way to the Ford Amphitheater. A banner that read the Future is Now Science Expo hung over the entrance where a line was starting to form. Peter took his spot at the back of it and grinned. Here you can see. I can't believe we're going to see the Anti-Grav 500 in person, Peter said, a machine that can reverse the law of gravity to make objects weightless. Do you realize what this could do for microparticle physics? Or basketball, MJ joked as she joined him. She rested her hands on her knees and caught her breath. I know you're excited, Pete, but couldn't we have stopped for just one hot dog at Nathan's? Peter rolled his eyes. And risk not getting in? Mary Jane looked at the seven people ahead of them. I don't think we have to worry about that. Why worry about anything? A nearby voice asked. Peter turned to see his friend, Harry Osborne, exiting the amphitheater. Harry, he said, what are you doing here? My dad's company, Oscorp, is sponsoring the expo, Harry answered. I've been here all morning. Why don't you guys hang with me backstage? Do you have hot dogs? MJ asked. Nathan's famous all beef hot dogs? Of course, Harry replied. MJ smiled. That sounds terrible, Peter interrupted. I've been planning to come to this event for months. I planned to get in line early. I plan to make friends with my fellow line goers. The kid beside them saluted. What's up? Peter waved back and continued on. Then I planned to study the science displays they have on the way in. And lastly, I planned to be one of the first people to see the anti-grav 500 in action. Thanks for the offer, Harry, but no thanks. I've got my plan and I am sticking to it. Mary Jane sighed. Can't you go with the flow, Pete? She asked. The doors don't open for another hour, and all that running made me hungry. Peter's stomach growled. He ignored it and crossed his arms. You can go if you want, but I am staying put. Mary Jane frowned. Okay, well, text us if you change your mind. Uh, Peter said nothing as MJ and Harry walked toward the amphitheater's backstage door. He turned to the guy in line who had saluted them and was now eating a sandwich. What do you got there? Peter asked. Uh, peanut butter, anchovy, and mayonnaise, his line mate answered. Want some? Peter's stomach flipped and he covered his mouth. You know, maybe I do have time for one hot dog, he said. Then he left the line and ran after his friends. You can see that delicious sandwich right there. Chapter two. The anti-grav 500 rested inside a glass case on the amphitheater stage. Though right now the auditorium was empty, in less than an hour, hundreds of people would witness this modern marvel at work. Until then, a different kind of marvel had a job to do. Captain Marvel perched on the rafters of the open air theater. The Avengers surveyed the room. She scanned each entrance, exit, and shadowy corner for anything that didn't look right. Like a scheming bad guy, or a masked villain, or a yummy hot dog? An enormous fist held the delicious delicacy out to Captain Marvel. There you go. 
One Nathan's all beef hot dog with the works, said a voice from the far end of the auditorium. It was Captain Marvel's friend and fellow superhero, Kamala Khan, also known as Ms. Marvel. Her superhuman stretchy arm delivered the food while the rest of her body caught up. Oh, you got me a snack, Captain Marvel asked. That I did, Ms. Marvel replied. Captain Marvel licked her lips. You are my favorite superhero, she said. She took a bite. I bet you say that to all the Avengers, Ms. Marvel teased. Just the ones who feed me and save the day, Captain Marvel said between mouthfuls. Speaking of day saving, let's review the plan. Ms. Marvel said, we scan the sky. Captain Marvel nodded. If Avengers Intel is right, the Green Goblin is going to try to steal the Anti-Grab 500 today. Everything we know about him says he'll either fly in or out on his Goblin Glider. So I'll patrol the South Horizon. And I've got the North, Ms. Marvel confirmed. Time to go to our post, said Captain Marvel. Ms. Marvel put her hands on her hips. Aren't you forgetting something? Captain Marvel smiled. The heroes faced each other and commenced their secret handshake. Marvel me, marvel you, marvel us, they chanted in unison. Then Captain Marvel and Ms. Marvel separated. They took their positions and waited for the Green Goblin to strike. Now you can see them doing their handshake here. And there's a special editor's note. It says, do you wish you knew the Marvel's secret handshake? Well, you're in luck, true believer. There's a mighty Marvel handshake how-to at the back of the book. And we'll be posting that for you guys, but uh, make sure you do it with gloves on or with the people who you are staying with right now, social distancing. Ahem, going on, chapter three. This is the only way I want to attend science expos from now on, Mary Jane said, as she helped herself to a second hot dog. She, Harry, and Peter were in a room behind the auditorium. It was a private area filled with tasty treats and comfortable couches. It's fine, I guess, Peter said. He gnawed on a pretzel. But I think we should go back to the line now. What? Harry asked. Peter, I brought you here so we could all hang out. That's the point. Peter shook his head. No, the point is to gain scientific knowledge. You can do that too, Harry assured. He pointed to a big screen TV across from them. When the presentation starts, we can grab some popcorn and watch it on that monitor. Peter's mouth fell open. If I wanted to see the anti-grab 500 on a screen, I could have stayed home and watched YouTube, he cried. He tossed the rest of his pretzel into the trash and shoved his hands in his pockets. Leaving the line was a mistake. I'm going back. I'll see you guys later. Peter, wait, MJ called, but it was too late. Peter had left the room in search of an exit. Unfortunately, finding one was not easy. All these hallways look the same, Peter muttered to himself. He wandered around the maze-like corridors of the amphitheater's backstage for a few minutes before he finally saw a sign that read stage with an arrow pointing right. Peter's pulse quickened. Could that be where the anti-grab 500 was? Sure, he wanted to experience it with all the other expo attendees, but one quick peek right now wouldn't hurt. He was about to go for it when something stopped him cold. An evil laugh echoed down the hall. The hairs on Peter's arms stood on end, but he didn't need his spider sense to tell him something was wrong. He'd know that maniacal cackle anywhere. It was the Green Goblin, which meant one thing. Spidey time. Chapter four. At last whispered a voice from behind a thick curtain that cloaked the wings of the stage. Today is the day I add world domination to my villainous resume. Today I will make the Antigrav 500 mine. It will be the greatest weapon in my arsenal. My enemies will either follow me or float away. He cackled quietly, then took a step toward the stage and the object of his desire. All that stands between me and my new toy is a tiny glass case. A finger tapped the Green Goblin on the shoulder. And a human spider, Spider-Man said. Bam! Spider-Man delivered a mighty blow to the Goblin's chest and sent him flying. The Green Meanie landed hard in a corner backstage. He began to laugh. The Green Goblin was one of Spidey's most fearsome foes. They had fought across every one of New York's five boroughs. Though he was a madman, the Goblin was brilliant, which made defeating him that much more of a challenge. Spider boy, the goblin said as he got to his feet, you caught me off guard with a sucker punch. That isn't very honorable. 
He threw a spinning dagger at Spider-Man. Spidey dodged it gracefully. But stealing a priceless piece of technology is? He shot his webs at the ceiling. You're going to have to work with me on your definition of honorable. Spider-Man grabbed his web and swung at the goblin. The goblin raised his hands and sent a blast of electricity from his gloves at the wall crawler. Spidey somersaulted out of the way. He landed on his feet and then charged his enemy. But before Spider-Man could reach him, the goblin jumped onto his goblin glider. He zoomed onto the stage, smashed the glass case, and stole the anti-grav 500. Ha 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 ha, the goblin laughed. Victory is mine. Victory is oof, short-lived, Spider-Man asked. His webs were coiled around the goblin glider, preventing it from flying away. Now let's discuss your definition of victory. There's Spider-Man catching him. The Green Goblin turned to Spider-Man and grinned. He lifted the Antigrav 500. He pointed it at the wall crawler and blast. The rays from the machine hit Spider-Man head on. A lunatic laugh filled the auditorium. The Green Goblin dragged his stalled glider and disappeared backstage along with the anti-gravity laser. Spider-Man did not chase after him. He couldn't. He was too busy floating away. Uh-oh, what's gonna happen? Chapter five, our last chapter for today. Let's see what happens. The amphitheater was an open air venue. That meant the only thing standing between a, let's try that again. That meant the only thing standing between the sky and a helpless floating superhero was a tented roof that Spider-Man thought looked pretty flimsy. Suddenly, a beam of energy zapped Spider-Man in the chest and his body descended to the ground. He landed safely on the floor of the stage where the Antigrav 500 had been. A superhero dressed in red and blue with a gigantic left hand raised past. Hi, Spidey, Ms. Marvel called as she disappeared backstage. Another hero stood over Spider-Man holding the blaster that had returned his gravitational pull. She offered her hand to help him up. You might recognize her. Captain Marvel, Spider-Man said. Thanks for the assist. The Green Goblin is here and I, we know, Captain Marvel said. Ms. Marvel is chasing him now, which she wouldn't have had to do if you hadn't messed up our plan. Spidey looked confused. You're what now? Captain Marvel explained. We knew the Goblin was coming for the Antigrav 500. That's why Ms. Marvel and I were patrolling the sky. If we didn't catch him on the way into the amphitheater, we were going to stop him on his way out. Spider-Man smacked his forehead. Oh, geez, he said, I'm sorry. Captain Marvel shrugged. It's okay, she said. We'll find him and then we'll put our plan back into action. Spider-Man perked up. I can help too. I'm sort of an expert on the Green Goblin. Captain Marvel looked skeptical. Seriously, Spidey said. We're like arch enemies. I know everything about him. What weapons he uses, how he likes his tea, milk, two sugars. So I know you've got your plan, but Goblin incoming, Miss Marvel shouted. Freed from Spider-Man's webs, the Goblin Glider sailed past Spidey and Captain Marvel. The Green Goblin cackled as he rode it into the afternoon sky. The Antigrav 500 was still in his hands. Ms. Marvel jetted past them. He's headed for the Cyclone, she hollered, referring to the giant roller coaster on the boardwalk. She stretched farther and grew bigger with every step. You can see her going after him there. Spider-Man was about to join in pursuit when Captain Marvel stopped him. He's got the laser and we've got the blaster that reverses its effects. Ms. Marvel and I will handle this. Thanks anyway, Spider-Man, she said. But I can help, he protested. Next battle, she said firmly. Then Captain Marvel fastened the gravitational blaster to her back and flew into the sky. Watch out for the delayed pumpkin bomb, Spider-Man called after her. He loves to use it on newbies. But she was already too far away to hear him. See her flying off there, Spider-Man trying to help. So, oh, and Mary Jane and Harry Osborn are there too, but they're somewhere else. So here we go, chapter six. Zwish, Mary Jane and Harry had just returned to the line and were looking for Peter when they saw the green goblin fly out of the amphitheater on a glider. In one hand, he held a glowing pumpkin. In the other, the anti-grav 500. That's not good, Harry said. <gasps> MJ gasped. We have to find Peter, she said. We never should have split up. We never should have made him change his plans. And now we don't know where he is. What if he gets hurt? I feel terrible. 
The goblin turned and flew back toward the amphitheater. His madman's laugh rung out as he tore through the expo banner. MJ and Harry ducked. Don't feel terrible for Peter, Harry said. Feel terrible for us. A supervillain just flew over our heads. The goblin zoomed down the boardwalk. He flew into the amusement park. Time for a demonstration, he said. Then he lifted the Antigrav 500 and blast! The laser hit the bumper cars where two friends, Lyra and Isla, were enjoying their very first ride. They were happily ramming the other cars when their vehicle suddenly started to float. It was about to reach the ceiling when fzz, another beam of light surrounded them and their car returned safely to the ground. The girls looked at each other wide-eyed. Again, they cheered. You can see Harry and MJ ducking and Lyra and Isla having the time of their lives completely unaware of the danger they are in. From outside the amphitheater, MJ and Harry watched as two superheroes chased the Green Goblin and returned gravity to everything uh, the Flying Fink blasted. Harry, look, MJ cried. It's Ms. Marvel and Captain Marvel. Oh, I love them. Harry clapped his hands. We're saved, he squealed. Get em, Marvels. Chapter 7. It's over, Goblin, Ms. Marvel said. She and Captain Marvel had him cornered against the cyclone right by the bumper cars. Hand over the Antigrav 500 and we'll get you a knish for the ride to jail. Just then, an empty roller coaster car sped by on the track. The Green Goblin grabbed hold of it and was whisked away. Catch me if you can, he laughed. Captain Marvel flew after him. Ms. Marvel stretched her limbs to cover more ground as she gave chase. The heroes followed the goblin through every twist and turn, dip and drop of the cyclone's riled ride. But when the coaster car reached the tippy top, the goblin slammed on the brakes and yanked the car off its tracks. Ooh. He turned to the marbles and in a one-two punch, hurled the roller coaster car at Captain Marvel and a pumpkin bomb at Ms. Marvel. In biggin, Ms. Marvel yelled, and her hand grew huge. She caught the pumpkin bomb in her fist and squeezed it to dust. Crushed it, she said. At the same time, Captain Marvel went for the runaway coaster car. She fired her gravitational beam at it and brought it gently to the ground. When I promised to uphold the law, I didn't think that would also mean the law of gravity. The marbles stood fist raised and faced the green goblin. He didn't hesitate. He hurled another pumpkin bomb in their direction, but it landed limp at their feet. Looks like this one is a dud, Captain Marvel said. That's what you think, the green goblin cried. Blam! The pumpkin bomb exploded. It knocked Ms. Marvel and Captain Marvel down and sent the gravitational blaster flying. It crashed onto the floor and broke into pieces. Ooh, again, not so good. As the Green Goblin took off down the boardwalk, a familiar figure ran to the hero's aid. Delayed pumpkin bomb, eh? Asked Spider-Man. He reached out his hands. Maybe I can help. Chapter 8. Spider-Man pulled Captain Marvel and Ms. Marvel to their feet. Boy, are we glad to see you, Ms. Marvel said. Thank you, Spider-Man, added Captain Marvel. It looks like we didn't know as much about the Green Goblin as we thought. Maybe our plan could have been a bit more flexible. She put her hand on the web slinger's shoulder. Think you could help us? Spidey said, anything for the Marvels. Ms. Marvel clapped. Oh, goody, it's a team up. Ha 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 ha, the Green Goblin's evil laugh echoed down the boardwalk where he had left a trail of floating objects in his wake. Captain Marvel lifted the pieces of the broken gravitational beam. Think you two can contain the goblin while I try to fix this? We'll need it if we want to reverse the effects of the anti-grav 500 and call this day saved. On it, Spidey and Ms. Marvel said in unison. Then Ms. Marvel turned to Captain Marvel. They commenced their handshake. Marvel me, Marvel you, Marvel us, they said. You see everything floating away. Spider-Man smiled. You're so going to have to teach me that, he said. Then he and Ms. Marvel hurried down the boardwalk. Captain Marvel got to work on the gravitational beam. In a matter of minutes, the machine was fixed, except for one thing, the battery pack was missing. Just then, she felt a tug on her arm. Excuse me, Isla from the bumper cars said. Are you looking for this? Asked her friend Lyra. 
Isla held out her strawberry ice cream cone for Captain Marvel to see. Stuck in the center of the creamy confection was the missing battery pack. Captain Marvel high-fived the girls. I sure am. Chapter 9. Spider-Man and Ms. Marvel paused at the top of the boardwalk. Ahead of them was a path of floating people, pets, and things. A corn dog drifted past Spider-Man's face, followed by an ear of corn and an actual dog. You don't see that every day, he said. Ms. Marvel rubbed her forehead. Ugh, if Captain Marvel can fix her gravitational blaster, she can permanently reverse the effects of the anti-grav 500, she said. So she'll bring everything that's floating away down safely. But we need to buy her some time. Think your webs are strong enough to keep stuff from floating into outer space? There's only one way to find out, Spidey replied. Whip. He shot a web at the floating dog and tied her to a post. The dog yipped and wagged her tail. I see her right there. It worked, said Ms. Marvel. Let's keep going. The heroes raced down the boardwalk. Rising above them were pretzels and pizzas, sideshow players and sunbathers. Even Spidey's old friend, Officer Ditko, was hanging around. Oh, and I thought Beach Patrol would be relaxing, he said as the heroes shot past. Ooh, this is a lot of stuff floating away. But Spidey's webs keep them in place. Spider-Man used his webs to tether anything that floated to something solid. Ms. Marvel used her stretchy arms to catch anything that drifted beyond the web's reach. Once all was secure, the heroes located the goblin. He's at the top of the parachute jump, Ms. Marvel said. But how are we going to get up there without him using the laser on us? I have an idea, said Spidey. If there's one thing I know about the Green Goblin, it's that he loves to rub it in when he thinks he's won. Ms. Marvel shook her head. That is poor sportsmanship, she said. Sure is, Spider-Man agreed. But what if we use that to our advantage? How are your acting skills? Awesome, she replied. I did a scene from Frozen for the Avengers talent show. Totally made Iron Man cry. Perfect, said Spidey. If you can make the goblin think he's got you beat, maybe you can distract him long enough for me to take him by surprise. Consider it done, Ms. Marvel said. And she was off and running before Spider-Man could say, see you at the top. Chapter 10. Before we get there. All right. Here's the parachute, jump, and that's where we're headed. Ms. Marvel climbed up the spine of the parachute drop. She waved a little white flag. Yoo-hoo, Mr. Goblin, she called. Are you up there? The green goblin flew down on his glider. He held the anti-grav 500 in his hand and was about to attack, but he paused when he saw the white flag of surrender. Oh, woe is me, Ms. Marvel began. Green goblin, you have me beat. It's time I admit defeat. You are too fast and too strong. The goblin looked at her suspiciously. Ms. Marvel held her breath. Then the goblin settled into his glider. And too clever, he added. Don't forget, too clever. And too clever, she agreed eagerly. She looked around. No Spider-Man yet. You really are just so good at this bad guy thing. You're very inspiring, he asked. Totally inspiring, Ms. Marvel cried. Still no Spidey, she continued to stall. In fact, your uh, success is making me consider a career change. Yeah, that's it. I want to be a bad guy. Really? The Green Goblin asked. I made you want to be a villain? Suddenly, the Goblin felt a tap on his shoulder. He spun around to see Spider-Man hanging upside down behind him. Nah, Spidey said, but she did make me want to take acting lessons. Also, you have to stop falling for this. Wham! Spider-Man knocked the Green Goblin out cold and straight off his glider. The bad guy flew down the boardwalk and landed in a car on the Wonder Wheel, where Officer Stanley and the NYPD were waiting. Nice job, Spider-Man, Ms. Marvel said. He did not reply. Spider-Man? She looked around the parachute jump. Spidey wasn't there. Then she looked up and gasped. Spider-Man was holding the anti-grav 500 and floating up into the sky. I got the laser, he hollered. Unfortunately, it got me too. Hang tight, Ms. Marvel called. 
She climbed to the top of the parachute jump and stretched her body as long as she could, reaching for Spider-Man's foot. She almost had hold of his toes when a gust of wind came up from the ocean and blew Spider-Man away. Uh-oh. Okay, so that wasn't good, he said to himself. He looked up at the sky and gulped. <clears throat> Outer space, huh? Never really wanted to go there. Doesn't seem so fun. A bird flying nearby did a double take when she saw the floating hero. Spider-Man whistled to her. Hey, little birdie. Think I could hitch a ride back down to the boardwalk? Give me a lift and I'll spring for some peanuts. I'm not a big fan of peanuts, but I wouldn't say no to a cotton candy. <gasps> Captain Marvel, Spider-Man cried as the hero flew up beside him. I have never been so glad to see someone and her gravitational blaster in my life. Captain Marvel aimed the beam at Spider-Man and fzz, she brought him back down to the ground. There she is catching him and saving him. After the heroes restored gravity to all the floating people and objects along the boardwalk, they returned the anti-grav 500 to the science expo. Oh, thanks for your help today, Spider-Man, Captain Marvel said. I'm sorry that I started out so stuck on my plan. Though having a plan is an important part of dealing with a problem, sometimes things change and we have to be able to change with them. Who knows? Sometimes the plan can get even better. Believe it or not, said Spidey, I totally understand. He thought of MJ and Harry and how he could have been more flexible with his own plan. Ms. Marvel bounced excitedly. Because you were such an awesome part of the team today, we thought we'd make you an honorary Marvel, she said. Want to learn our handshake? Spider-Man gasped. The Marvels grinned. Do I? He replied. The trio wasted no time getting to work. Before long, they perfected the handshake, complete with a special added twist. Marvel me, Marvel you, Marvel us, Excelsior, they cried. Captain Marvel threw her arm around Spider-Man's shoulder. Now about that cotton candy. And here are our friends doing a thwip at the end when they say Excelsior. Chapter 11. Peter, Mary Jane cried. She and Harry were standing outside the gates of Luna Park when she saw her missing friend approach. She ran to him and hugged him hard. We are so glad to see you. Yeah, Harry agreed. Next time you storm off, make sure the Green Goblin isn't flying around zapping people with an anti-gravity laser, okay? Peter laughed. Okay, he agreed. MJ pulled away and looked at the ground. We're sorry we asked you to change your plans today, she said. We knew how excited you were to see the anti-grav 500, and it stinks that you missed it. Oh, I got to see how it works, Peter said. Yeah, the goblin put on quite a show, Harry agreed. But really, Pete, we are sorry for messing up your plan. Peter regarded his friends. Thanks, guys, but I'm sorry too, he said. Things don't always go according to plan, and that's okay. I'll try to be better at going with the flow from now on. MJ linked her arm through Peter's. Well, we've got a couple hours left before we have to head home. What do you want to do now? Peter thought about it. He shrugged and smiled. I don't know, he said. Let's just see what happens. And that is the end. Thank you guys. This has been a real treat for me. I am so happy that we got to do this. I hope you enjoyed the story and uh, keep coming back to Marvel HQ. For more stories from other people, I think there's going to be how to draw stuff, lots of cool things. Uh, I hope you're hanging in and, you know, we'll just keep washing our hands and seeing our friends from six feet away and waving and doing stuff like this. So take care. Be safe. Bye.